Hey everyone, so I have been reformatting my hard drive and uh, on a whim I decided to try setting up the dolphin emulator and my test ROM for it was this game, Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom, which if you have followed my YouTube videos for any long amount of time, like I'd say a little over three or four years, you will know that I have been wanting to let's play this game since the beginning of time. Uh, I actually made my first YouTube channel, which is now down, uh, with the express purpose of let's playing this game. Uh, I thought that I would need a capture card for it, and I did at the time because I, I mean, this is only up until like a year ago did I even have a computer that could run a GameCube emulator. Um, and then I'm also an idiot and got distracted and never wanted to set it up. So, uh, I mean, no point wasting any more time. Yeah, I just started playing a little bit of it just to make sure it worked, and I'm gonna let the opening cinematic go without commentary first, and then I'll talk a little bit more about the game. Welcome to Bikini Bottom, a normally peaceful undersea sanctuary. Today, it will be transformed into a theater of pure horror, wherein our little yellow friend will play the starring role. Today is the big day. I have devised an ingenious plan to finally steal the Krabby Patty formula. And if Bikini Bottom happens to get demolished in the process, oh well. <laughs> With my brand new Duplicatotron 3000, I'll clone an army of robots that will wreak mayhem and destruction at my command! One last review of the checklist. Let's see. Item number one is Plankton a genius. Answer yes! Okay, checklist complete. Throw in the switch! <laughs> Welcome, my perfectly obedient robot army. Hang on, I want to get a photo for my scrap. Oh, hey, hello? What do you think you're doing? Oh, no, 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 wait, wait! But I'm your master! I made you! No, no! Oh, my good China! Another perfect day playing robots and racehorses. Yeah, only I keep getting the racehorses and the robots mixed up. Wouldn't it be great if we had real robots to play with, Patrick? I'd name mine Robo Junior, or Zorlon, or maybe Frankie. Yeah, these unreal robots are getting boring. Hey, what if we put the robots in here? Oh, how shellfish of you. I, 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 it's not just any shell, it's my magic wishing shell. Wow, that's great, Patrick. So we put the toy robots in here. Okay. Then we say the magic wishing words and shake the magic wishing shell. Okay. Then we go to sleep, and in the morning, we'll have real robots to play with. But Patrick, Aren't we going to say the magic wishing words? You already did! So, okay is the magic wishing word? It used to be Alakazama Alabala Wisna Tikitana Fushbar Griddle Bits Von Schnauzer, but I kept forgetting it. Are you sure this will work? Sure! Last week I only had one big cookie crumb and I was really hungry. So I put my cookie crumb in the magic wishing shell. Then I said the magic wishing word and shook it. And in the morning I had lots of little cookie crumbs. Patrick, I proclaim that tomorrow is going to be the best day ever. Good night, SpongeBob. Good night, Patrick. The next morning. <laughs> Gonna play with robots, gonna play with robots, gonna play with robots, gonna play with... Wow! Uh, Gary, did you do that?
Yeah, Gary. It sure looks like we're in a doozy of a pickle. I think I'm gonna have to learn a lot in order to fix this mess. Wow! What a fantastic idea! These signs will provide important tips to help me out. Um, how do I read the signs? Wow. Oh, okay. Press this button to read the signs. Wow. So if I want to come back and talk to you again, just walk up to you and press this button. I'd better get started now, Gary. I think that this is going to be a very long day. Okay, so uh, let me let this play and then I'll get talking. Have been attacked by a raging torrent of robot horror. So much for fixing this quietly. <laughs> Authorities are not sure who is responsible for unleashing the mechanical menaces, but they have assured us that the person is in big, big trouble. Uh oh. Did I say big trouble? I meant so enormous that it's hard to comprehend trouble. We'll keep you posted as this tragic story unfolds. Tragically, we're sure. Okay. So, I'm not gonna let all of the dialogue go without comment, like, I'm gonna talk over this. Um, cause this is all just kind of establishing gameplay mechanics and whatnot. Um, I also don't have my headphones in right now, so I don't know when they'll be stopping, so I'm just kind of putting the text on the screen so you can read them if you want. But anything particularly, like, complicated or whatever, I will, I'll explain. So, like, or not complicated, but it doesn't matter. You're not playing the game anyway, you don't need to know how it works. But these are shiny objects, they're your points. Um, you have to get a bunch of them in order to do things. The main one, if you see this uh, icon there, are golden spatulas. They function the way that like stars or shines or jiggies or uh, what a golden bananas in Donkey Kong. Uh, 64 do. They unlock areas and whatnot, and they're just the main, main collectible in this collectathon. And yeah, underwear is your, is your life, and this is kind of fun bit here. Um, and yeah, Plankton made some evil robots. People think it's SpongeBob's fault. It's kind of like Mario Sunshine in that way. Um. And yeah, these signs are just teaching you how to do all your moves, and I already know how to do this. Um, so yeah, I guess I should explain uh, my relationship with this game, because it is the primary reason that I want to play it. Um, this game was the first game that I ever owned myself. I got it for Christmas in 2003 for the Xbox, the original Xbox. I've owned it on three different consoles since then. Um, and it is one of my favorite games ever. It's, I think, really, like, unnecessarily good for a licensed game. Games based on licensed properties are sort of infamous for being kind of shitty and rushed, and this game is by no means perfect or, like, anything astoundingly unique or anything like that, but, uh, it's competently made, it's not, uh, like, broken, and, you know, it's fun, and the levels are, uh, they get decently challenging as, as time goes on. Um, I don't know, it's just a nice game, and I know that now it's, like, on an upswing, like, it really is, uh, having a comeback now, especially with the speedrun community. This will not be a speedrun, I'm not a speedrunner. I probably will never attempt a speedrun of this game, but who knows. Um, also, I guess I should say right out the bat that this will not be like a walkthrough in the strict sense of the word. I won't be doing everything in the most timely or strategic fashion. I'll be playing the game the way that I play it. It will be a 100% run though. Um, so, uh, because I've played through this game, it's gotta be in the hundreds of times by now, and, uh, yeah, so I'll be showing everything off. Like the socks, Patrick's socks, there's 80 of those, and they, uh, 
Uh, he, it's kind of like the blue coins in Mario Sunshine. He gives you one golden spatula for every ten socks that you give him. Which, I mean, he will explain in his dialogue. And I'm talking over the actually important and entertaining dialogue with Plankton. Which, uh, is... I mean, it's only important insofar as Plankton is gaslighting Spongebob into thinking that he is responsible and that is why you need to get the golden spatulas. That's always my favorite part of video games, especially video games like these where, like, there isn't much of a realistic reason for the player character to be the only one doing anything. Um... And so the game needs to, like, come up with story reasons to justify it. And yeah, Bubble Buddy's cool, he just tells you how to do moves you already know. Uh, SpongeBob will learn new moves uh, as the game progresses, but right now we're stuck with this uh, generic spin attack, this... Uh, I think it's called Bubble Bounce, this thing does enemies from far away. But there'll be other ones. And I'm gonna skip through this Mr. Krabs dialogue. I really want to just get, like, to the game part of this game. I want to play it and show it off. But Mr. Krabs also has, you know, to show you the pause menu, uh, yeah, Patrick and Mr. Krabs both have a couple spatulas. Mr. Krabs trades you spatulas for shiny objects, which is a big pain in the ass, and we are going to do it, and because of the way the progression of this game works. I don't know if they just expect you to play the same, like, 30 seconds many times as you're playing through it, um, or if they really do, they being the makers of the game, just want you to do a shitload of grinding and backtracking in order to get 100%. But either way, that is what you have to do, because, um... While I don't think I've ever run into the issue of, like, not having enough shiny objects for something at any point in the game, um, they really, if you are playing through the game at any sort of reasonable pace, um, then, uh, you're not going to be much, very far ahead of what you need for the shiny objects, to the point that you would be able to just breeze through the game and be able to give Mr. Krabs all the shit that he wants without any extra effort being exerted. <laughs> so, uh... But that's, that's life. And I won't be showing much of the grinding on screen because it's not particularly interesting. But, yeah. I am so sorry, Squidward. Patrick and I were just playing a game and... Now I correct myself. I should have known that whole robot problem involved both of you. Squidward, I don't know what to do. How can I fix everything? Why don't you move to another town? That should help out more than enough. Ha! <laughs> ha! Move to another town. Ha! <laughs> ha! You cracked me up. <laughs> but seriously, just jump around like an idiot. That should at least make me smile. Ha! <laughs> Yeah, this is one of the more fun and stupid <laughs> missions in this game, or spatulas in this game. It's literally called Annoy Squidward, and if you destroy everything and do that, then you get a sock. I used to not know at all what the criteria, what you had to do to get that sock was when I was a kid, um, but I liked destroying everything in all of the buildings in this game. And so I would just do that, and I had no idea. I thought that it was just the painting. So one time when I was trying to do a quote-unquote speedrun, which just means playing the game a little quicker than I normally do, uh, I was trying to get all of the socks, which you would not do in a speedrun, and so I just went over and hit this thing, and nothing happened. So that is when I learned that you have to destroy everything and then give Squidward a mustache in the painting, and then you get the sock. <sighs> so yeah, I am going to do a little bit of grinding here. I'm going to go through and smash all these things just because there is a, a pay clam. I think that's what they're called. But they're clams. Oh, hello. 
Um, they're clams, you feed them shiny objects, and they open up places for you. And there's a b pretty big one coming up shortly. And I, I know that I don't have the correct number of uh, shiny objects for right now, so... I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, okay. I'm trying to think of other, like, beginning of LP slash beginning of game like, info that I feel like a reasonable viewer would want at the beginning of the LP. Uh, I guess I apologize if there's any, like, graphical or performance issues when it comes to the ROM. I've only played so far in advance in this game to see if the ROM would work. The reviews for the ROM indicate that it's pretty good. I haven't seen anyone have problems with it. And I know that this exact ISO is one that speedrunners I've watched of this game use. So, we'll see. Uh, but I, I mean, I can't guarantee that it will work perfectly for the whole time. I'm really hoping it does. I would like to finish this game. Um, I said that it would be 100% run. Uh, I don't know. I've... I mean, I also just want to show off the game to people who aren't familiar with it and would like to see it, because A, I really like this game, I think it's really good, I think that it's fun that you kind of just get to play through an extended episode of Spongebob in a way, you know, you go to all of the major locations and whatnot, and all that and meet most of the seasons one and two characters, at least. I don't think there are any season three introduced characters in this game, because I don't think it was made in time for that. Because season three started in earnest in 2002, in late 2002, um, and this game came out in 2003, but honestly, I have no idea. Um, I don't know where I am in the video right now, but let's go into Jellyfish Fields. You can tell I did not plan ahead whatsoever for this. I'm just doing it out of complete joy at my ability to. Rolling green hills of Jellyfish Fields, a place to experience nature at its most raw, and sometimes a bit tender from the stings. Are you okay? No, I'm not okay, you barnacle head. Do I look like I'm okay? Well, your nose does look pretty big. I mean, bigger than usual because it's usually pretty big. And you look clammy. And oh my gosh, you're bald! I've always been bald, but now I'm stung all over. Well, according to the Jellyfisher Field Manual, severe jellyfish stings can be treated effectively by applying a thick layer of King Jellyfish Jelly to the affected areas. <laughs> King j j Jellyfish! Well, I guess you're off the scale Spork Mountain and die a horrible death under the vicious tentacles of King Jellyfish. <laughs> I'll stay here, balled up here in excruciating pain. You do that! Don't worry, Squidward! I'll bring back that King Jellyfish jelly for you to rub all over yourself. Alright, so this is Jellyfish Fields. This is the first real level of the game uh, that actually resembles what the rest of the game will be like. Um, and these are the robots, and these things are called fodders. Um, I'm not entirely sure why, they just kind of scrape you, die in one hit, they're worth five points, they're nothing too special. This water is not water, it's called goo. Spongebob, it says Spongebob and Patrick. Patrick is one of the other playable characters in this game, Sandy is the other. Um, and they all cannot swim in goo, which is apparently different than water, so that hurts you, so don't touch it. I will, however, be deliberately falling into the water many times because there are things in it that you can get by dying. Um, and I also got hit by, like, the second enemy of the game, because I'm magnificent at this game. Um, I think I was saying something earlier, and that was that I wanted to show off this game, even just kind of little dumb shits, because, uh... 
I've played this game many times in the last 15 years, and I, in that time, have searched every nook and cranny in this game for stuff, because if you are me, if you were me and you're young, you're, you know, six or seven years old and playing this game, you're not really good at video games at all, this is also applicable to now, um, <laughs> then, uh, there are parts of this game that were confusing and then I got stuck on, and I will be pointing them out as I go, because there are many of them and they are embarrassing to admit that I was not able to figure out the admittedly pretty incredibly simple um, solutions to a lot of the, the objectives in this game. Uh, and this clam was much lower than I thought it was. It's been a good while since I've actually let the entire beginning of this game play out. Um, you know, it's been... God damn it. Uh, I'm also getting used to this controller that I'm using, but, um... Yeah, it's been a while since I've, uh, just, like, seen the opening cutscene and listened to all of the beginning dialogue again, because usually when I play this game I just blast through all the dialogue because I've heard it a trillion times. Um, yeah, this is a freezy fruit. You're supposed to freeze the goo and then walk on it, but you have to bring Patrick all the way back here from way later in the level. So usually what I do is I just kill myself. Um, and, uh, that seems to work. Uh, and be a little bit quicker. So, yeah, let's do that right now. Right on it! Hell yeah! It was all worth it for one-tenth of a golden spatula. So yeah, this is kind of, uh, I feel like a fucking normie saying this, but this is kind of the ultimate nostalgia game for me, because I spent... This might be the video game that I have logged the most hours on, which is so strange, because it's not a particularly long game. Like, I don't know how many videos I think this is going to take to beat, um, especially if I keep it in the general 20 to 30 minute range that I generally try to with LP videos, um, but it won't be a lot. I mean, if it, if this takes more than, like, 25 videos to beat, then I'll be pretty surprised, especially if I am at all diligent about editing out, like, dumb bullshit that I do. Um, then this game shouldn't take long. I think you can, you can get through this game in a quick, like, five to seven hours if you're not fucking around and if you don't suck at it. Um, I intermittently suck at this game, but most of the time I'm competent. Um, and the first, like, two-thirds of the game, if I'm being honest, isn't incredibly difficult. Um, it's only really in the last third that things sort of kick in high gear, and then it gets... It was really, like, just, like, controller-splittingly difficult to me as a child, but later on, as I've gotten older, the later levels that are a little bit more complicated and... I'm not gonna say less linear, but it's a little less... Like, you have to do a little more than just run in a direction, avoid X, destroy Y, collect Z. Um, you know, there's a little more, like, puzzle fuckery going on and whatnot. And there are certain routes you can take that will make certain things easier or more difficult. And, uh, it is, it is those levels that I now appreciate more in my, in my elder times. The other thing I've been getting used to is that on my PS2 copy of this game, every time I get a spatula and it has to autosave, um, it pauses for, like, a good 25 seconds or something. What is this ledge? This ledge pissed me off as a kid, because I always thought that this meant there was something around here, and there is not. And I also thought that you could get around this, 
and that there would be something over that way, and I was incorrect about that. Get ready to hear that story about 50 times while I play through this game. I thought that there'd be something here, and I was wrong. And yeah, we already have our second robot of the game, the Hammer. So-called, because... Well, yeah. They, they hit you with hammers. And these... Let me tell you something. This is only the second level, really the first, because Bikini Bottom acts more like an overworld than an actual level, although it does have regular spatulas and it even has socks that you can find. Um, but yeah, this is really the first real level of the game, so none of the robots in this are, like, incredibly crazy to beat or anything. Really, the only difference... Oh yeah, we can't do this yet. Um, yeah, uh, where, where can you see it? You might not be able to see it. Oh, there it is, that sock up there. I just realized something. Okay, good, I can sneak, that'll be important later on. Yeah, that sock up there, uh, you cannot get. I'm sure there is a way to get up on that little spire there, but, um, you need the bubble bowl to hit all of the pins and then it will, it will come down for you, so we'll have to come back for that. We will have to be doing some backtracking for the socks and such, and a few spatulas, but I think you can get all of the spatulas in this on the first run. In this level, I mean. Um, shit, I forgot what I was even talking about. Oh, so, um, this is pretty early in the game. The hammers aren't, like, ridiculous or whatever in terms of what they do. The only real difference between the, uh, robots introduced at the front of the game versus the back is the moves you need to effectively kill them, not necessarily that they are more difficult to beat, um, or are harder to, although several of them are. Um, but there are plenty of sort of late introduced robots that aren't particularly difficult to, to kill. Um, this is precarious. Uh, fucking hell. <laughs> um... Luckily, there are no lives in this. You can't lose in this game. There's no game overs. It's a fair, very forgiving game, for the most part. Um, which is probably why I liked it so much. And probably why I avoid... I avoided genuinely very difficult video games for a long time, and I kind of still do. Um, I'm much more about enjoying the ride than about, like, feeling like I overcame. Like, I, I've... You know, it's some feat or whatever. I, like, not that I think that's an illegitimate reason to like playing games that you like to be challenged, and I don't like games to just be, like, dog shit where you don't have to put in any effort, but you know what I mean. But anyway, to make my original point that I was trying to make about 10 minutes ago, um, the, uh, the hammers are annoying. <laughs> they. Uh, they stay- stick around- Jesus Christ, why can't I get up here? They stick around for the majority of the game. They're in, I think, every single level, and, uh, you wouldn't think that just something that hits you with a hammer if you're close enough would be, like, a particularly annoying or difficult to get around enemy, but just they place them at the most- Un, like, helpful and shitty areas. Oh, that was funny. He committed seppuku. These are the spawn things. They spawn robots until you blow them up. And uh, these, I'm not gonna jump in here, but these teleport boxes, you have to open both. Um, and then once you open both, then you can hop back and forth. It isn't good for much other than backtracking. Um, which, of course, is a good thing, although some of them, uh, you have to be kind of careful. And you actually have to, like, open the box before you do a mission so that you can get back and get the spatula. And it's a little bit weird that they don't tell you that. Um, but, oh well. But yeah, the hammers, they can really do a number. 
This is where I'm expecting to split the video. If so, I'll see you in the next video. I hope this is a let's play that interests you and that you would want to see. I have no idea, I'm gonna pause it. I have no idea about an upload schedule for this. I would, I can probably get it to the point where I just upload one of these per day, but if that would be like mega overkill for people, then I would understand. Um, but I mean, I'm playing this, like we're, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> so, uh, so I hope people enjoy it. Um, yeah, so yeah, if I'm cutting the video off here, I'll see you next time. If not, then I guess I'll just look like a fucking idiot right now.